we're live so, yeah um hello everyone um hope you're doing well enjoying your bank holiday and having a good time this friday the weekend is coming so um today we're just welcome to catching up with blessed and today we have a very special guest um the president of bolton su we're going to be touching on um on a few things um, we're going to be touching on, on his journey as a sabbatical officer, some of his experiences. He's going to be sharing some experiences with us about how to um, be a student officer for some people that might be interested in it. Or for some officers for next year that have already been elected that need some tips for their rules and how they can effectively represent students, especially in this time. Then he's going to talk us through what is going on so far, how he's getting going up to the current situation and we're just gonna get to know him a little bit so Ansh, welcome to you thank you thank you for having me thank you yeah so before we start we're just gonna get to know you a little bit is that okay we're gonna play a yeah. little game and yeah. this series of questions so we're just gonna ask you football or cricket oh cricket <laughs> why well, uh, I've been I've been a cricketer, so personally, yeah, it's it's a personal thing, and you know, it's quite uh, popular in my country. I have, I, have a, I have a lot of love for football, but cricket any day over football. Okay. Do you play you? So you play play cricket then? Cool. Fashion or cars? Cars. You seem to be a very fashionable person. So why do you play cars? So I have the fashion, so I just want the cars. I don't have the cars. <laughs> good, good. I'll go with the cars. Uh, money or fame? Money, money, yes, because I can do a lot for my family, close ones, and you know. So money, money, money would be the one. Yeah, money is always nice. Um, <laughs> India or UK? India, there's there's no there's no there's no, sec, there's no second thoughts about it. But right. UK is lovely. It's a second home. The last one is music or poetry. Music, music. Okay, cool. All right, now we're just gonna get into the um, discussion properly. Um, we just wanna get to know you a bit. Just tell us a little bit about yourself, like your experience as from being an international student up until like becoming like the president of uh, Bolton SU because that's an incredible journey going from just being a student coming from India to the UK and then representing all students in your campus. Just give us a little bit of brief on that. Uh, to be very honest, uh, I think I was, uh... I was just lucky that they were the right people around me. So mm. I got the opportunity to do what I did. But being as being an international student, I was uh, very lost for the first few months when I came and I just wanted to go back. Mm. So there's a couple of times that I was dropping out of the university and going back to India to pursue a career in cricket mm. because I felt like I could make it then okay. a couple of years ago. So I had played on a good level. So I thought that I can play and I can pursue and do something. But, you know, my, my course leaders or my lecturers tried to support me and try to make me understand that, you, you know, you got to get your degree done and stuff like that. So I was listening to them and there was, uh, there was tricky times. And so why I ran for the student president for the, the first reason why I ran was that I didn't want to study, so they told me that they they will be <laughs> they will be no 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 studying for an year. So I was like, wow. <laughs> so I'm if I will be honest, that was my first motivation. Uh, okay. But during my during my campaigning, when I met the students, I realized how much it meant to them. That really did change my perspective. Okay. So you, you mentioned about like initially when you came, there were times where you had to go back to India and chase a career and all of that stuff. I mean, going forward, I mean, in this current situation, there's like, let's say a lot of international students that probably like in accommodations, um, they're in isolation and they kind of don't, the only way they have access to their family and friends is off through like FaceTime or video calls and all of that. What sort of 
um, things can you sort of suggest to them to do during this time, sort of keep their mind busy and make sure they are not sort of in isolation or any other? If I'm being honest with you, yeah. Guy, I have had a lot of experience living alone. Yeah. And it is very difficult not taking that fact away. But there are a lot of things, and I'm being genuine, because before this, I used to go to my office in the morning and come back from the uni at night. So I know that it's difficult to stay at home because I could not stay at home. Yeah. The university is my escape. The work is my escape from it. So coming back, you can work out in the morning. Talk. Mm. Uh, so for, for what I do is like, you know, a bit of exercise here and there or talk to my mm. family, talk to the mm. people who really care about you, eat good food, you know, cook cook for myself i am not a good cook so i'm trying to learn new recipes so that that helps my you know yeah, time and stuff good. and i play a lot of games so just on the phone i sold my ps4 so you sold <laughs> your ps4 i was gonna challenge you to a fifa game but unfortunately. i had to pay my bills man <laughs> <laughs> makes sense makes sense <laughs> so so you know, mm. so I, I on the phone only, you know. Okay. So it's it's watching Netflix and and I sleep on time and get up on time. So my schedule is not something special that I'm doing, but trying to cook and trying to talk to the people I love and reading here and there. Sometimes I'm not a good reader at all and doing my work because uh, we. I think my I need to give credit to my team at the students' union because. Uh, they have made a schedule that keeps us busy all day. For example, if I start work at 10, I am busy till 4 in the afternoon. So I just sometimes turn off the cameras in the meetings and just eat some food and mute it and stuff. Because it's, it's, a, good, it's a good schedule. And I think these virtual meetings get the work done quicker. That's really good. So before the whole COVID-19 situation, was a day like... For the president of Bolton SU, what was a day like for you when you get into the office? What's the first thing you do in the morning? To be very honest, uh, <clears throat> when I started, it was um, it was difficult to get my head around because of a lot of things. So I used to come and because in July, August, the, the, most of the students are not on the campus. Mm. So after freshers, really, I got to get my head sorted. There are at least a couple of meetings every day uh, with certain committees of the universities, and there are a lot of them. So I make sure that I attend all of them. So mm -hmm. I remember for the, from the from the first July 2019 to December to, till the Christmas break, I did not even take one day off. So wow. Then the. I, I won't take away the fact that the university has supported me a lot because, you know, there was the there was a fire in an accommodation and stuff like mm. that as well. But a general day, coming back to your question, a general day would consist of a morning team meeting with the team every morning, mm. like a just 10, 15 minute brief. And then uh, I don't do my emails during the day because I feel that I can do a lot. So there are four or five campuses and there's only one sabbatical officers officers so i make sure that i'm at different campus interacting with students so go, then go I, back again so there's yeah. only one of you or like there's yeah. one sabbatical officer in each campus no no only one of me so there's just you and that's it yeah wow and so, a team of team of five four in the su yeah so how big is the student population about yeah. it's over six thousand okay Fair enough. Fair enough. so Makes sense. Six thousand on campus, yes. Yeah, you mentioned I was I was gonna get to the next one, but you mentioned the whole like fire inc incident. I know that would have been some sort of like challenging to handle, but looking from afar, like seeing on social media on different platforms, obviously following you personally, seeing like the way you handled the whole situation, the amount of sort of like no not even just student representation but the amount of care and the amount of like love i would say that you show towards like and passion that you show towards what you do and at that point in time where 
students needed a lot of support and care. It was it was it was incredible. I I, I do applaud you for like the way you sort of handled the situation and what you sort of did around that time, and seeing all the necessary support that was coming around and that you the issue and everyone was passing in place. So how was that time for you uh, as the president? How how did you feel during that time and how did you manage to handle the situation the way? So what happened was, so I remember one day before, one day before the fire, I remember I was speaking to my friends and stuff like that. I was like, I went to this Nottingham Trent University and I saw the university, I was like, wow, man, this is amazing and stuff like that. And I came back and I had an exhausting few months because we had a TEDx talk and we had uh, we had some university reviews and stuff like that. And it was exhausting. And we had so many events going on. So I was like, I've reached the point where I need a break. So it's the 14th November. So on 15th November, so... I thought that I've done a lot of work and I finished all my work, did all my emails. It was six. So my friends came in the office and said, let's go. I thought, I'll, let's play cricket for an hour. So, and on, unfortunately on that day, the cricket guy made us run a lot. <laughs> I ran for an hour and then when I went home and then my friends wanted to go out. It was Friday night. Yeah. Like, man, you, you, you will kill me. So I was up in my bed and I was like, should I get up? Should I get up? And I got ready. I got ready and I got out and a call comes. <laughs> and I was actually going to the cube only. <laughs> so a call comes. So I was around the cube. There's, a, there's been a fire thought. They're wow. joking and stuff like that. And I had no energy. So they said there's a fire. So I just had a bad vibe after two seconds of them saying. So I just started running. And when I reached, I was like, shit that this is serious and from then to the next 10 days i did not know how the time flew by i'm being honest and so after 10 15 20 days i was just looking on all the social media and i was discussing it i have been i've been lucky that i've been given so much love and so much support was shown to the students from all around the you know, university, students' unions. And, you know, it was just something that was so overwhelming and made me feel like, man, I never thought you don't sign up for these things like these. So I'm glad that nothing happened to anyone. And, you know, possessions is difficult, 110%. But everyone's safe. And that, 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 that all was in my mind. And... Mm. the charities and all the donations that came in it was overwhelming like at 3 a.m i i put out a tweet at 3 a.m that please and by the morning you you know as you there was our union and our university was flooded mm. and you know it was it was just a crazy time i've never seen anything like this yeah i mean that that, that was really incredible and i remember sending you a message on on instagram, on instagram yes. saying um, hope you're keeping well and um, try um, and I see what you're doing and all the best and um, hopefully everything keeps going well because you've been doing really well but I think most of the times as officers like when you're handling a situation like that situations like that sometimes you're like really busy some is even hard for you to sort of like even take care of your own self and your own well-being because you're so ingrown um, in the, in the moment trying to fix the situation and trying to do, do your best that you can. So how do you, how do you manage to make sure that obviously your own well-being and your, your own state of, of mind was, was, was clear enough and you were in a very sort of like healthy sort of place to handle that kind of situation? Because it's not really something that you can prepare for, like you said, because it just happens. So in that moment, how do you sort of make sure that, because there might be like, Obviously, I'm not wishing for anything to happen. No, I'm not saying it's going to happen. But in future times, like officers that might, that would, let's say, lead their different issues next year, or even not just full-time officers, part-time officers, they're going to face challenges. They're going to have um, little, little challenges here and there, whether it's just being a course rep, you have challenges in your class where students want this. So how do you sort of make sure that you can balance your own sort of like, well-being with what students want so that you, you can be in the best state to to sort of represent and do your work in, in that situation. 
what did you do i think for the first few months i just wanted to do so much that i did not feel like the need of taking care of myself mm. so the first few months i neglected myself a lot uh, i did not know man i just you know i used to think about the work problems and all the time but my friends my girlfriend and everyone helped me keep seeing my family keep talking to them mm. so my close ones my brother everyone you know they just uh, i think the people who are close to me have you know kept me helping me and making sure and telling me everything and where i'm going wrong so that's good and to get things done you have to be a good listener I, i'm not a good listener i promise you i I'm, i'm trying i'm i'm still getting there but uh, there is something different about my university man like i was telling you i was in nottingham trent it was a beautiful yeah. university i went yeah. there man like four five events happening in a day mm. but then i realized that it's a different university they have a different budget it's down south and there's mm. so, so many different factors mm. and coming back to my university the way people have shown me so much so much respect you know you always want that it's just unbelievable like i never thought mm. as an internet when you come you don't think of you know doing these things and you know helping students representing students so i i think just looking from someone else's perspective like sometimes my team members and me don't agree on things but i realize that they are right sometimes because you have to see it from the other person's point of view as well you cannot just be like oh i have got to do this i have got to do this yeah so i think listening to people did help me because i don't listen to the negative energy negative people around me but the so many of them are just positive people and nice people around mm-hmm. me so even the senior yeah. management they guide me as well so i think you have to listen and you have to be patient and don't panic don't panic yeah i mean what you what you said is exactly correct i mean why i find most times is um as as a student representative you sort of have to listen your first job is to listen anyways because you have to listen to what the student want want in order for you to sort of implement it and is 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 two ways as well you have to listen to what the students want um you have to be able to sort of communicate that to the university or whoever whoever it may be and is like you said listening is very is very important because it keeps you in the in the in the know of what's going on in the environment it keeps you very active in your role because you you can always get a lot of information in there's nothing like too much information you just need to know what you getting in and what what you're receiving like you said positive information is very good but also like getting as much information as you can so you can you can know what to do about it and then communicating with the right people at the right time is very important so obviously we are now like in may next month is june most officer years are end in june like most people's as a vertical rules end in june then from july would have new set of student representative even like national on national level representing students across different sort of issues across the country being someone that has been a president this is your second year as an you were you elected as president you know uh, so what has happened is mm-hmm. uh, our elections did not uh, had to be postponed during uh, because of yeah. the corona virus and mm-hmm. this covid 19 so we are make, waiting for a decision from the board of governors and the board of trustees so okay. they'll make a decision so hopefully okay. it would be a positive one so i'm looking forward to it yeah so what would you, what would your advice be to you? so so for someone who's been a president for a year what would your advice be to people who will be coming into student unions for like the next year being full time officers part time officers we've talked about he about listening but what other advice would you sort of have to give them to help them in in their first couple of months as sabbatical officers or even part time officers uh respect experience mm-hmm. people who are experienced than you there will be people you you have to trust yourself with decisions there will be people who will doubt you and stuff like that but you know you don't get a decision right without trying it either you go wrong or right 
there's no three ways about it so it's fine it's fine you're not going to go to jail for trying something new if it fails it fails yeah and you got to listen you got to be respecting the experience and just just got to be true to yourself and that would just because as you asked me in, in the beginning of the interview why i ran for the president mm-hmm. because i did not want to study mm-hmm. i'll not lie saying that i have been thinking of well being since the beginning no no i thought yeah. about myself Makes and sense. then my work made me happy helping students made me happy helping people and getting work done made me happy and that atmosphere of the su the senior management everyone helped so there will be amazing people around you and there will be people who don't hold the same uh, thought process as you so you don't have to be disheartened because this is not the be all and end all you know you're not the president of the united states exactly. even united states president is not forever so you don't have to worry nothing lasts forever but what but what you do with all your heart will remain in some people's heart these students will come and go as well 3 years yeah. fly like this man fly like this graduate one year yes if anyone has any question for anch on the on the comment just put it on the comments and then we can ask him i mean like what you said is very i i resonate with most of the things that you said um you just have to understand that you are in there for a certain period of time that you're in there to make effective change um one thing that is always key for me is always remember where you're coming from and where you're going to because if you always remember where you're coming from you know that students are the ones that put you in that position so you always have optimum respect for students and then where you're going to as well you would have respect for your journey ahead of you so it's always important to respect people um listen and you might have ideas that sometimes might not be feasible or might not be realistic but you just have to be able to balance what you can realistically achieve with what your goals are in in, in when you are in your role try to balance it and um, you would always have a little team of people around you that could advise you on certain things or certain procedures and all of that but yeah it's all about res- listening showing respect and being be being active active in your job and be um always there to make sure that the the core people that brought you in there you always respect them which which is just you know, it's, 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 it's very important now coming into the biggest situation at the moment that is affecting everyone across the world covid-19 is a massive um it's not what would i say it's a massive health concern around around the world the global the global issue um usually a lot of unions are known for like putting events and all of these things to engage students to make sure our students are having the very best experiences officers are used to putting up events together putting campaigns together and um, things that would encourage students to know what's going on within the union and make sure and feel like the union do represent them and their interest but now most of those things have been moved online which is still good because you can still engage students but how how has the whole covid-19 affected you and the let's see your work i think uh, it was difficult in the sense that coming to terms with it was difficult in the sense that personally i had a lot going on so mm. i felt that you know once the for example what happened was this started i think it got bigger in march second week of march so yeah so this started and i remember on the second march or third march there was a case in bolton and stuff like that so we spoke to the vc about it and he was quick to act so he said that for the well being of the candidates who are running for the elections which was one of me and i was working hard for this campaign and because i just really wanted to get it done and resume yeah. my work because for a few days i was just campaigning and you know i was still doing my work but not missing any meetings but it's not as efficient as i would have liked it to be mm-hmm. so just preparing for the elections for 7 8 10 days and you know working all on the promotion alone and stuff like that it it made me exhausted and few days later the election just got cancelled on the day of election wow so then um lost my granddad 
in 10 days and i could not go back because the flights were so i took a good 20 days and i could not i just could not accept some facts man i just could not i just Mm. I felt I felt so dependent on my friends and people, and I was like, "Which is not right for someone being." You decided that it's time to get yourself right. It's what has happened has happened, and you have to move on. So, but credit to my team, they gave me a lot of space, a lot of time. But I was still I was not using social media as much, and I I want to avoid it as much as I can because. Some of the, some of the questions that students ask, it's crossing some lines, which is not right. Mm-hmm. So there's always have to be respect from both sides. Mm-hmm. Sometimes some students don't understand that. Mm-hmm. I, I don't, I don't run the university. This is not what I am doing. I am, I'm run, I'm, I'm, I'm someone who's lobbying for them. Yeah. Then why are they blaming me? They are, if, even if what has happened before and what the work we have done it's no yeah. i have not done anything individually yeah we have done and they still feel like that i'm not doing it or i'm not or i'm avoiding something yeah it's not right they have to understand what i'm going through personally so yeah it was hurtful yeah i said i said my condolences and um hopefully you, you can you feel better but I, I guess like sometimes it comes it comes with a job as well because being a sabbatical officer or someone like you who's the president, you sort of representing the whole SU. If everything is going well, everything is like, ah, oh, she's just doing a great job. He's doing. <laughs> if everything is not going well, they are slamming you. But at the same time, sometimes I understand situations where sometimes you, you know that you're working towards it or you're making certain meetings or you're meeting with certain people towards it, but you can't necessarily say yet, but then people is is more like because that is not out there means you're not working and you can get some certain um maybe shouldn't say oh you're not working you're not doing this you're not doing that but I, for me for me personally i think it's just about making those students understand that there is something happening there is something going on this is what we're doing this is what's happening and for me as well what i try to do is try to make it as transparent as possible like if I was doing something, I, um, it's about getting students to know that this is what we are doing. Or just every any single student that you come across, because even if you think about it, all the different channels that we used to communicate with students, emails, um, social media, all of this, there are students that that information wouldn't still get to, that can meet you, like, let's say you're walking down on campus and someone's like, oh, you're the president. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. How are you doing? Da 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 in my course, da da. You, you're not doing anything about it. But you said to them, oh, yeah, this is what is happening, this is what's happening. But they didn't even know but up until they met you. So, because at the same time, you can't reach out to every single student. It's, it's, it's not realistic, to be honest. You can't meet every single person because not every single student stays on the campus. Not every student, some students, once they finish their class, they go home. You can never see them. So, it's different. So, yeah, so no, not everyone is going to know what you're doing. But yeah, I guess sometimes it's really frustrating that people, when you're doing work and people don't recognize that you're actually putting in the work, representing them and doing it to their, to their very best um, interest. Um, I think we're coming towards the end. Uh, it's been lovely talking to you. Well, I was going to ask you, you, doing, you were saying you're cooking, you're trying to, you know, don't read that much, but you're trying to read a little bit. And what else is keeping you up and playing video games? What else is keeping you busy during this time? Apart from working, because I know you work a lot, but what else is keeping you busy and keeping your mind going? I think a few Netflix series I would recommend people to watch. Which ones? That, Which ones? Let's th- see. There's actually a good one. There's there's something called the last dance michael jordan that that's amazing the documentary is it the documentary yeah. i it's, haven't watched it yet it's flawless man it's flawless. it's amazing it's amazing great story because you know being a sports person i, I loved it yeah i need and to watch it for general viewers as well it's amazing and then there is something called never have i ever it's it's a comedy american teen show like it's it's funny 
Uh, and Bollywood films, Bollywood films keep me going, man. You know my favorite Bollywood movie of all time. Which one? Three Idiots. Should- Oh, three idiots, yes. The one oh. with, what's, what's his name? Uh, what's the name of the... Uh, it's, it's not American, is it? American, yes. It's yeah. American. <laughs> it was in there. That is my favorite Bollywood movie of, of all time. In fact, that's it's, my favorite... It's one of, of my favorites as well, yes. It's, it's one of my favorite movies of all time. It's, it, it makes you laugh. It makes you cry. It makes you think. It's, it's, very, it's a very good movie. I don't, I don't yes, know. I agree with you. It's, it's, it's an amazing one. It's, it's something that changed my life. I think Bollywood movies made me realize my passion for things. <laughs> so what, what so, your passion, so apart from Ansh, the president, what, what, what else do we, what, what other talent do you have? What, what my other talent? Do you do? What else my do you other, I, I like, I like, I'll just, I, it's like everyone, man. I'm like, just like to chill with my mates, eat food, relax with the family, you know, go back home. So just play cricket sometimes watch movies very simple so it's nothing really but i yeah food is something I like to try different food but i'm vegetarian so there's a <laughs> limit to what i can try okay so, yeah. how long have you been vegetarian for since i've been born man really <laughs> yes how come my mother's a strict vegetarian so she's vegan so she's on the next level so uh, she's she's an animal conservative but I, yeah I want to get my tattoos done. I've got a few tattoos, so I want to get my sleeve done and stuff like that. So, uh, so you like the ink? Yeah, I like the ink. I am. Yeah. I'm not addicted, but yeah, I want to get a few tattoos done. I don't like tattoos because I'm too dark. If I have a tattoo, no one is gonna see it because the ink is dark, anyways. So there's no, no. no there, there are darker, there are darker, you know, shades of uh, inks that you can get. Yeah. I would recommend you the right tattoo, tattoo artist. <laughs> No, nah, no, nah, I think I'm too I'm scared of the needle anyways. I'm, I'm, I don't have that kind of pain resistance. To, 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 to fair enough, fair enough. But yeah, um, it's, it's been lovely talking to you and hope, I wish you all the best in what you do um, going forward. And hopefully you'll be president for the next year as well because you've done such a great job. And all the best, my friend. Is uh, I remember when we first met in London, but you, you're very passionate about what you do, about the students that you represent, about sort of general life in general, but just keep doing what you're doing and I wish you had the best. Yeah, and London was London was funny. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we, we had a lot of banter, but you know, it was yeah. funny because in life, nothing's too big. And I'm kind, I'm really grateful that you took out the time and the questions you asked in the beginning were quite funny and interesting. And, yeah, of course, you to, love three idiots. So, <laughs> <laughs> trying to make it fun. I'm trying to get um, as many sub, um, sabbatical officers as possible. I'm trying to basically touch on how it's been so far, how they've enjoyed it, what they have been enjoying. Because we never get a time to sort of like, we're always on the go trying to get things done. There's always, you solve one problem this week, there's another problem this week, next week. Sort of reflect on some of the things that you've done, some of your biggest achievements. Actually, I didn't ask you, I was going to ask, what has been your biggest achievement so far? Just the love and respect, man. That's, that's all I've been taught. There's nothing lasts forever. Respect does. So there's a lot of respect I feel the students have for me and I have the same for the students. There's a, there's a amazing student community that I have, we have. And I'm just literally blessed that things happened the way they happened and the amount of respect and love the people showed I, I my money is one thing and but that is something that makes me sleep better at the night so. you have to be able to sleep and close your eyes properly that's yeah. very important but yeah anyways thank you so much and thank you for your time yes uh, take care my friend